This is Poor Nielsen with Random R Attack, and this is Homework 2, Fleshing Out the Scene. Uh, so we're going to be talking about changing some pivot points and working on some faulty models, filling out the scene so it looks awesome, and putting several different targets around the area. So without further ado, let's do this. So what we're going to do now is first we'll go to the flower layer, and wow, this is zoomed up. If you select something and hit period, it'll zoom in like that, so we don't need to worry about it. I want to change the pivot point so it's not so low on the flower. I actually want the flower to kind of go in. So I'm just going to tab in edit mode, hit G, move it down, and there's the pivot point moved. We also want to do it with these ones. And it's also too tightly packed, so I'm going to just circle select, get those vertices. So I'm in top view by hitting 7 again. Circle select, circle select, and that's about it. And then maybe one in the middle there. And you can see it, it's a little bit better spread out. Hit A, and then G, move them all down like that. Then with the big clump, i probably just going to duplicate this thing. So Shift-D, M, to move it to the different layer. And then delete the old one, because we don't really like it at all. Tab into edit mode. Shift-D, just duplicate this. And then I'm rotating these a little bit so they're a bit different. Looking nice there. Happy little flowers. And so I just kind of want a lot of area coverage. So let's go ahead and look at that. Looking a little bit better. I, I can see a lot of pattern though, so I'm going to break this up by circle selecting and probably deleting a couple of these flowers. So just selecting these, delete vertices, and it's looking less uniform. And you can play around with it and get it exactly how you want it. Now I'd go ahead and export these out. Now with the bushes, if we want to be higher, we can just move it up like this. And that would be the pivot point would make it so the bush is floating. We don't really want that. So maybe we can add some stems. Let's go ahead and add some cubes here. So shift A, add a cube. It put it way by where the cursor was. So it's up here. So shift S or just click somewhere else. Scale that down. Scale this along the Z axis. And then I can kind of just make by rotation some stems. So everything below that blue dot is going to be underground. And so I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. If I don't, I'll just delete it. But I, I kind of want to look and see. Move them to the correct bush, bush position. So I'm just moving these with uh, G. Duplicating. And I'm looking at this, not super in love with this. Don't quite know what this is going to look like, though. So maybe if I add a plane, I can kind of see what this looks like. But I'm going to move this to the center here. So everything above that point is above ground. Everything below that point is below ground. Let's go ahead and add a plane, scale that up. That's what it's going to look like in Unity, something like that. Yeah, I don't like that very much. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete this, tab back in, L, I can just select these individually with L, Shift L, and delete those verses. Let's go ahead and I'm going to look and see if I like it hovering. I don't. I like it in the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and tab back into edit mode, A to select everything and G along the Z-axis. So now the center is in the center, so I like that. It's looking nice. That one's already kind of where it needs to be. Uh, same with that one. So I can export these, select these. Now the only difference is when I export these, I can go ahead and go to my Assets folder. And then Models. Select the one it's going to be replacing. Selected objects, experimental transformation. And 
I just update that, and you can see that it kind of moves them down into the ground already. So let's update some of these flowers and see what happens. I'm going to go to the big grouping first. 0, 0, 2 is the one we all, we want, so select this. So that looks about where we want it. Export FBX. Select the flower 0, 0, 2 like we said. Hit Export. Now as we go back into Unity, it should update it. Huh, it disappeared, so where did it go? So maybe a little too low. Assuming that I can see that they're beneath the ground there. And it's actually just... Maybe I didn't have them selected. It looks like it's blank. Maybe if we just re-export these. So I'm just going to put one right here to make sure that... I'm going to zoom in on that tree there. Drag this. I'm seeing. I don't know. Maybe it's just too far down or just an issue. It's already looking better than before, so I like that. I do want some random height to this, though. It's too uniform. So going back into Blender, I might be able to just select some of those. Let's just do that. So let's just select a few of these using C Select. I'm going pretty fast here. G, and then moving those down, and you can see the variable height. It's just subtle, but it's, it's the subtle things that make a big impact. So go to Export again, export that. Unity will update it, and you can see it updated immediately. So I'm just going to go ahead and export everything else. Again, very simple. Just click the thing that you want to export to, since we've already exported this originally and we're making changes. And always be careful to make sure to have selected object and experimental transformation selected. Otherwise, you'll get some issues interesting issues. So I can kind of shift control to snap and I'm going to put it kind of in the bushes so you can see it kind of uh, surrounds the bushes right there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put in do increase speed and just kind of go over this next little thing with like a thousand percent increase speed. You really don't need to watch this part if you don't want to. There's not too much information here. It's just me propagating the whole scene uh, sp sped up. Some workflow things that I did find I liked is just taking the single tree and kind of duplicating it several times, moving it where I wanted to, and then rotating it and scaling it the way I wanted. So nothing new. This takes quite a while, and you can kind of see why level design is actually a paid profession. Because it takes, it takes a bit to put the correct assets where they need to go. The next tutorial is going to be a lot more interesting, in my opinion. I enjoy this. It's, it's required to be able to set up scenes and things. But I really enjoy scripting. And so we get to start to work with physics and kind of go through there. What you just saw me do is I was pivoting the player's camera to kind of look at the views that they're going to see and try and make each view interesting. So it's... So there's no real just plain, boring spots. So everything kind of has a purpose. Everything in the background is just going to kind of blend into the background. You're not really going to see that much of it. And so I'm looking more at the foreground, trying to move things up. And I can always change this too on the fly. Um, I don't have to be married to anything too long. Trying to get these targets, some of them are far too far away. We're going to find out uh, as we add physics. But again, that's okay. Just kind of getting basically where I want them, and then we can change anything as the time comes and try and make it what we'd like it to. So that's it for the tutorial. Part three is going to be about the aim and shoot scripts like I was saying. Uh, the aim script, we're going to talk about rotation of rigid bodies and transformations. We're also going to talk about mouse inputs. The shoot script, we're going to be finding other object, other scripts within one script. Uh, how to manipulate blend shapes, mouse inputs, and actually changing the properties of rigid bodies. It is 
probably my favorite part of the tutorial series is, is the coding section. So I look forward to seeing you then. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you didn't, <laughs> that's all right. And please subscribe. It does help us out. Have a great day.